Hello friends and welcome to the next short video in the Ahargana series. In the last episode, I illustrated to you the concept of Rahu and Ketu. These are the two points in space where the orbits of the sun and the moon intersect. In this episode, I am going to illustrate to you a solar eclipse, an annular solar eclipse. Now, why am I talking about eclipses? It is common knowledge that Rahu and Ketu are associated with eclipses. And that is because eclipses can happen only when the sun and the moon are in the vicinity of Rahu or Ketu. And if the sun and the moon are exactly at Rahu or Ketu, then the eclipse will be a total eclipse. Now, in this specific example, I am going to show you um, not a total eclipse, but an annular solar eclipse. You will see later what annular solar eclipse means. And it happened on December 26, 2019. That was just before COVID stuck. And I remember this date very well because uh, I knew this eclipse was happening. And the path of visibility of this eclipse was right in my backyard. The path of visibility means though the eclipse happens, it's not visible from all parts of the earth. And this particular time, it was visible from very close to Bangalore. In fact, this, this, this uh, eclipse uh, ran right through Tamil Nadu, in between Tiruchirappalli and Madurai. So this band which you see in the center, that is the path of the total eclipse. From there, the complete eclipse can be seen. Outside that dark band, if you see, it will be a partial eclipse. So these places are very close to Bangalore. So me and my son, we took the car, we took our tripods, our cameras, our solar filters, etc., etc., and we drove down to Tiruchirappalli, Tanjavur. We visited the temples there. Then we drove down to Madurai. The day before the eclipse, I was in Madurai visiting the Meenakshi temple. And on the day of the eclipse, in the morning, we finished breakfast and we started driving along this path. And somewhere here, I stopped the car by the side of the road. And then we got down, we set up our tripods and we started photographing the eclipse. The eclipse had just started at the time, so we immediately stopped the car and started photographing the eclipse. Now I am going to animate the entire solar eclipse and show it to you using Stellarium. Now this view is visible, uh, is very familiar to you. This is the ecliptic, the green circle, that's the path of the sun. And in the last episode, I had pointed out uh, that Ketu is somewhere near Jeshta. So Ketu is somewhere here. So now I don't need the full ecliptic any longer. I'm going to zoom in. Now I will let you in on a little secret. In all these episodes so far, I have enlarged the size of these planets and the moon so you can see them clearly. But now that anyway I am zooming in, I am going to remove that enlargement. And this is the real size, the apparent size when you see from the surface of the earth, the sun and the moon. Let me center the sun. And here is the moon. And this is the orbit of the moon. And somewhere out on the left hand side, beyond this frame, is the intersection of these two, which is Ketu. Now I am going to continue the animation. See what happens. The sun, uh, the moon is approaching the sun, but at the same time, please observe that the eclipse, uh, the Ketu is also now visible on the screen, and Ketu is also moving. In this direction. So the Sun, the Moon and Ketu are all converging to the same point in space and that's what results in a total eclipse. Now the two are so close I'm going to enlarge so you get a nice view of the eclipse. Let me center this again. Okay, so now I'm going to proceed really slowly and observe what happens. Now the eclipse is about to start and there it has started. 
the moon is blocking out the sun and this is exactly what we saw and what we photographed. Because we had solar filters, we were able to see this and now you see K2 is also visible on the screen. It's also converging to the center point. We were not able to see these bright flares which are shown here. We just saw a really orange disk of the sun because we had solar filters. In fact, there are a few villagers who came by. I gave them my solar glasses and they also saw the eclipse. And now I come to the real reason why I took the trouble to go and photograph this. See what happens now. There. That's why I said this is not exactly a total eclipse. This is an annular eclipse. Another name for this is the ring of fire eclipse. That is the ring of fire that you see there. The sun is not entirely blocked out. A little bit of it is still visible. But down on the ground, it was still bright and daylight. Yeah? Because even if it's just a thin bit of the sun which is visible, that's more than enough to light up the earth. But because we had our solar filters, we were able to see this ring and we were able to photograph this ring of fire eclipse. It's really a beautiful sight to see this ring of fire. And now let me continue to accelerate and move the eclipse away. There, the eclipse continues. Now the eclipse is receding. The sun is becoming more and more visible and Ketu is also moving away from that convergence point. Both moon and Ketu are moving away. And there is Ketu on the right hand side now. Now, almost half the sun is visible again. The eclipse is over. Not yet. Completely over. And when the eclipse is over, my episode will also be over. There, it's almost over. The moon is almost away from the sun and there it goes. Now the eclipse is over. It was about 11.20 when the solar eclipse came to an end. So that brings me to the end of this short video. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.